pong or if you've got a, hell, even rolling papers. Yeah. What about some of us cowboys out there that still like to roll our own cigarettes? Well, we can't do that anymore because if you have rolling papers on you, the police can arrest you for carrying paraphernalia. Yes. So then what are you going to do? <laughs> now you're doing time for rolling papers. Yeah. I don't know. Differing attitudes? Yes, extremely. This this whole pharmaceutical pot thing? Um, Crash is going to side on the air of these are a bunch of uh, initiatives that are being pushed by big drug companies. That's what this is. And uh, yeah, some of the pot that they've got in their uh, inventories in some of these places... Eh. It's, it's questionable as to its strength and indeed its genome. And if you know anything about pot, you probably agree with me. And, uh, yeah, I just don't think that uh, that's the greatest stuff in the world. I think if you're going to legalize pot, damn well do it. Don't just sit there and say, well, we'll do it this way, but you, you have to go through our government-licensed outlets and buy from Upjohn. That's not cool to me. <laughs> Pfizer, Pfizer weed. You've got to buy your Pfizer weed. No, no. I think uh, if it's legal, it's legal. Anybody should be able to grow it, sell it, buy it, period. There shouldn't be special places with security that looks like a bunch of mobsters because that only leads me to other conclusions like organized crime <laughs> or, well, to be fair, <laughs> big drug companies. Because really, that's organized crime, if you want to really look at it. And, and yeah, that's about that right there. So listen, we're going to go for another two-minute commercial break. When we come back, uh, we're going to look into this whole correlation between uh, pot and risky teen behavior. Because, of course, that's the other argument. Oh, well, our teens are going to go nuts now and start committing murders and, and doing all these things. And it's just, we can't have that. So that's why we can't have pot. Yeah, we'll get back into that in two minutes, gang. You've got it locked to New York's best talk, HTLA Radio 1. What if there was a coffee that was sourced from some of the world's most renowned growing regions? Abundant with rich, fertile soil. What if this coffee was picked at the perfect moment, then packed meticulously and shipped carefully to be roasted under the watchful eye of coffee masters? What if it was expertly blended, ground, and sealed, ensuring maximum flavor and freshness, then brewed in small batches and always served fresh, Within 20 minutes, just the way you like it. Now, what if this coffee just happened to be the coffee you already know and love? Tim Hortons. Always fresh. Always great tasting coffee. Morgan White Rum, five times distilled for a smoother taste. The hot new accessory, brows that wow. New from Maybelline New York, it's Brow Drama, our first sculpting ball brush with tinted gel. Just sweep, then sculpt for bolder, sculpted brows. New Brow Drama, get the look at Maybelline.com. Maybe it's Maybelline. Fast-paced, digital everything life. There's nothing like experiencing the world's finest journalism in its original form. So sign up today for as little as $3.80 a week to receive the greatest newspaper in the world. 
and all the incredible experiences that come with it. When we arrived at our hotel in New York, the porter was so incredibly careful, careless with our bags. And the room they gave us, it was beautiful. A broom closet. But the best worst part was the shower. My, My wife drying herself with the Egyptian cotton towel shower curtain to find that whole vacation, whole vacation for, her. for her. Don't just visit New York. Visit TripAdvisor New York. With millions of reviews, a visit to TripAdvisor makes any destination better. We're New York's best talk radio, ACLA Radio 1. Oh, we are. Yes, we are. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whatever it may be to you. Right now for me, it's 10.07 p.m. Eastern in the big city, 26 degrees and clear in Central Park. For this Tuesday, February 17th, 2015. Which means, of course, you are listening to the one, the only Chris Crash Jesus Taylor on Crash Talk. Tonight... The evil drugs. Yes. No, not all the evil drugs. Nope. We're just talking about 420, baby. Pot. Weed. Hence the title of the show, Mr. Weed. Yes. So there you go. That's what's going on. Uh, so far tonight, we've talked about, uh, well, of course, Colorado. Uh, seeing the... The first benefits there of their tax dollars hard at work, the taxes they're making from their sales of medicinal marijuana. And uh, we're talking about some of the other states that have uh, legalized the substance. And um, I'm also interspersing and introspecting, if you will. I'm, I'm throwing my, my 42 years uh, being right in the heart of Pot Town from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, of course. And uh, giving you kind of a, a smattering, an overall uh, direct experience, if you will, <laughs> about uh, yeah, just how kind of a, a lame kind of non-issue this really is. But yet everybody in the state seems to be so scared <laughs> so scared of it. And I'm not sure why. Well, maybe just maybe, we're going to find out right now. Because I'm going to talk about the links to possible risky teen behavior uh, and its links to marijuana. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> th this is to actually appease all you people out there who think, oh my God, they're going to smoke the ganja, they're going to smoke the devil's root. And we're, our society's going to collapse and we're all going to go to hell and burn. Yeah, not, uh, not, not pretty much any time in this reality, no. <laughs> no. Well, smoking pot appears to be linked to risk-taking in youths. Yes, that's what Statistics Canada suggests. The incidence of marijuana use was 1.8% to 2.6 times higher among youth who reported participating in, quote, risky behaviors, the agency reported. Among 16- and 17-year-olds who said that they stayed out all night without permission, 72% said that they had tried smoking pot. The remaining 28%, of course, had not. Among those 16- and 17-year-olds who said they had taken money from their parents, 64% said they had tried smoking pot. Out of those who reported that they had damaged others' property, 69% said that they had smoked marijuana. The survey also found that symptoms of depression, anxiety, and distress... Ooh, that sounds like a lot what you Americans tell your doctor to get the prescription, doesn't it? Hmm. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Symptoms of depression, anxiety, and distress. Yes. Well, those symptoms of depression, anxiety, and distress increased among adolescents as they grew older from 1996-97 to 2000-2001. In 1996-97, 9% of youth aged 12 and 13 reported having symptoms of depression, Statistics Canada said. 
By the time these youths were 16, 17 years old, 24% reported having symptoms of depression. The survey is a joint effort involving the National Longitudinal Survey of Children and Youth, Human Resources Development Canada, and Statistics Canada. It follows the development of children and measures the incidence of various factors that influence this development, both positively and negatively. The latest results are based on preliminary analysis of information collected from youths 16 and 17 in 2000 and 2001, who were followed from the time they were aged 10 and 11 in 1994-95. Now, <clears throat> you got to kind of understand something. Stats Canada, when they, they do these studies and stuff... Um, you know, you, you can participate as a family and your your mom or your dad or your mom and dad will sign you up and they'll sign the family up. Uh, I don't know. They're bored. They've seen too much Jeopardy. They want to do something new and exciting. So they, they sign up for these surveys. I don't know what it is, but it's a thing in Canada. And, well, we, we, we've taken – my family has taken part in these uh, StatsCan studies before too. And basically, the questions are, well, I guess relevant and pertinent uh, to your life and your lifestyle, et cetera, et cetera. And, of course, they're all multiple choice. And, um, you know, you can say pretty much whatever you want on these things. And, you know, you have to wonder about accuracy, uh, to be honest, with a bunch of them. Um, I remember actually doing one when I was about 15 or 16 and I specifically answered everything wrong because that's what teens do. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but you know, you're, you're talking also about, you know, 16.8% of Canadians between the ages of 15 and 65, as I told you earlier, uh, who, who smoke pot on a regular basis. Okay. Um, our crime rates comparatively to the United States are almost non-existent. Our violent crimes comparative to the United States, again, almost non-existent. Uh, mass shootings, non-existent. And don't talk about the Ontario shooting because that was one dude. <laughs> he didn't kill 200 people. He got one guy before he was gunned down by a retired RCMP. So, yeah, it kind of doesn't count either, does it? And you can't, you can't even include those because those were apparently terrorism. And terrorism isn't crime as we are talking about tonight. Terrorism is something completely different as we all fully know and completely understand thanks to Twitter and Facebook. <clears throat> but I'll digress from that for now. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, risky teen behavior. Uh, I'll go back to 1978. Yeah, 78. Yeah. Van Halen. Oh, yes. Where have all the good times gone? Oh, the beach parties. Oh, the pot. Actually, to be honest with you, I was more of a drinker. I enjoyed beer and, and my whiskey and all that kind of stuff a lot more. I would say than any drug, but this show's about drugs. It's not about booze and crashes good times on the beach with all those girls. No, no, we won't go there. Although that was, oh yeah. Anyway, uh, back to what I was talking about. <clears throat> back in 1978, there was risky teen behavior. Here's the difference though, ladies and gentlemen. Back then, we didn't strap GoPro cameras to our heads and go do the risky teen behaviors. No, we still went and did the risky behaviors, didn't we? Yes, because, and any psychologist on the planet will agree with me when I say this, and any parents out there certainly know what I'm talking about, kids feel invincible, okay? They do. That's a fact. It's part of that ego. Uh-huh. Thanks. Kids feel invincible, so they do amazingly stupid things. You know, let's let's look at the jackass movies. Huh? Yeah, you know the ones where they ride, you know, tricycles down hills in San Francisco and smash into buses and laugh and then as the guy's getting up from being hit by a bus, another one of them comes along and kicks him in the nuts and it's all just so fun and funny. Yeah? Yeah. Jackass. Well, 
That kind of thing has gone on since 